How concerning NASA's multi-billion dollar lunar exploration mission is at a standstill and risks failing at any moment. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Starship program is thriving, showcasing the growing power of the private sector in the space industry. This might be exactly the key NASA needs to salvage its mission before it's too late. However, NASA's yet to make a final decision. Orion does not get a heat shield upgrade. SLS will not be canceled. Why? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Once again, NASA's Artemis II missions have been delayed. While this may not come as a surprise to those closely following the program, for the space enthusiast community, the sense of disappointment is unavoidable. Artemis II, a crucial step in humanity's return to the moon, is now facing significant obstacles. In this context, the United States finds itself under increasing pressure as it participates in the modern space race of the 21st century. Remarkable advancements in space technology and competition from other nations have heightened the urgency of NASA's space exploration goals. China, a major player in this field, has set the ambitious goal of getting astronauts to the moon by the end of the decade. Notably, China is often cautious and precise in setting timelines, making it unlikely they're going to miss this deadline. Meanwhile, NASA's Artemis program continues to face a host of technical and management challenges, leading to extended timelines. First of all, there's the problem of the Orion spacecraft heat shield. The heat shield on Orion has emerged as one of the most significant obstacles to the lunar return. After Artemis I splashed down in the Pacific Ocean, subsequent inspections of the Orion capsule revealed unexpected performance issues with its heat shield. During Orion's re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, the spacecraft traveled at speeds of up to 24,600 miles an hour, that's 39,000 kilometers an hour, and endured temperatures exceeding 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Although NASA engineers had anticipated some scorching, the heat shield shed more material than was expected. That prompted NASA engineers and an independent panel to investigate the problem. As a result, NASA found itself stuck in a prolonged period of uncertainty as it worked to identify the root cause of the heat shield failure. Their hesitation about how to address the Artemis II heat shield issue delayed the stacking of the Orion spacecraft's heavy lift space launch system SLS rocket at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Originally planned to start in September, a full year before the scheduled launch, NASA chose not to assemble the SLS solid rocket boosters until they had definitive answers about Orion's heat shield. Fortunately, by late October, NASA resolved the issue and provided clarity to the space community. However, after identifying the cause of the Orion failures, NASA admin Bill Nelson, nearing the end of his term, announced that the same heat shield design would still be used for Artemis II. The only change would involve modifying Orion's re-entry trajectory. Based on the data, we have decided NASA unanimously and our decision makers to move forward with the current Artemis II Orion capsule and heat shield with a modified entry trajectory, Nelson stated. This decision, made during a late October meeting, was met with considerable criticism. Expediency won over safety and good materials, science and engineering. Sad day for NASA, Ed Pope, an expert in advanced materials and heat shields, wrote on LinkedIn. A former astronaut, Charles Camarda, also expressed his frustrations on LinkedIn, saying the space agency and its leadership team should be ashamed. In an interview Friday, Camarda, an aerospace engineer who spent 20 years working on TPS for the space shuttle and hypersonic vehicles, said NASA is relying on flawed problematic risk assessments and Monte Carlo simulations to determine the safety of Orion's existing heat shields. I worked at NASA for 45 years, Camarda said. I love NASA. I do not love the way NASA's become. I do not like that we have lost our research culture. It's hard to trust any of their findings, considering that NASA spent two years evaluating thermal damage caused by Orion spacecraft during the first lunar flight at the end of 2022 with almost no transparency. Initially, agency officials downplayed the severity of the issue, and the full extent of the problem wasn't disclosed until a May report by NASA's Inspector General, which included damages of a heavy pitted heat shield. From this, one might begin to feel a growing sense of unease about this critical mission. Of course, the heat shield isn't an isolated issue. It brings along other problems. Earlier this year, NASA investigated a problem with the Orion spacecraft's side hatch to ensure it could open under various conditions. This was an additional concern alongside the persistent heat shield issues. Artemis' team also found problems with valves in Orion's life support system designed to keep the crew alive inside the spacecraft. While the valves passed testing for Artemis II, they failed during testing for the Artemis III mission due to design flaws. NASA engineers also noted deficiencies in the performance of Orion's batteries intended for use during emergencies when the spacecraft must separate from the rocket. 
Another widely discussed issue is the permeability of the heat shield. Counterintuitively, the heat shield was not permeable enough during Artemis I. This led to gas buildup, higher pressure, and eventually the cracking observed. Furthermore, the heat shield for Artemis II by design is no more permeable than the one used in Artemis I. As of now, there's no clear answers to these issues. However, collectively, they represent a heavy burden weighing down on NASA. Next up is an upgraded mobile launch tower for the SLS, which has also been plagued by cost overruns and schedule delays. A new report from the USGAO found that NASA's Exploration Ground System, EGS, program, essentially the office at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, responsible for building the ground infrastructure to support the SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft, is at risk of delaying the Artemis II mission. The report, published in early October, revealed the EGS program had a few months of schedule margin earlier this year to work toward the planned September 2025 launch date. However, the program has now used up all that margin due to technical issues encountered during testing of the mobile launch platform and the rocket's launch pad. Earlier in 2024, the program was reserving that time for technical issues that may arise during testing of the integrated SLS and Orion vehicle or if weather interferes with planned activities, among other things, the report states. Officials said it's likely that issues will arise because this is the first time testing many of these systems. Given the lack of margin, if further issues arise during testing or integration, there will likely be delays to the September 2025 Artemis II launch date. Now, this is difficult to understand because, indeed, the GPS, or Ground Systems Program, has had several critical tasks to complete since the Artemis I mission at the end of 2022, including building an emergency escape system for astronauts in case of an issue during the launch countdown. But by September the following year, the program will have had nearly three years to address these and other facilities. At this point, there's no margin left in the schedule. In addition to these two sources of the delay, the development of Axiom spacesuits, and more notably the costs surrounding the SLS, are significant barriers slowing down the lunar mission. NASA has struggled countless times with estimating the cost of this rocket to the point where it's even admitted that the SLS price tag is unsustainable. Meanwhile, around the same time, SpaceX's Starship public relations activities have been incredibly proactive particularly focusing on the Starship test flights. This included October's feet, where the vehicle's massive booster stage was caught in a pair of robotic arms as it fell back from space to the company's launch pad in Texas, wowing space enthusiasts across the globe. Unlike many launch vehicles, Starship is designed to be fully reusable. Its cost efficiency could greatly benefit future crewed missions. This creates a stark comparison with the vehicles currently facing challenges and highlights the immense responsibility of NASA's leadership to chart a new course for this ambitious lunar mission. Now, in the past, many would confidently assert that NASA would never cancel SLS. However, I now believe that under a potential Trump administration and with Jared Isaacman as NASA's new administrator, this could change. Isaacman has been a vocal supporter of the agile, iterative approach embraced by the commercial space industry for technology development. He's also criticized the government's top-down waterfall model for managing costly space projects. Shockingly, the government does do business very differently than the rest of the country, Isaacman said. Cost reductions enabled by reusable rockets will allow us to experiment in really grand ways, Isaacman said. You talk about the cost to accelerate the mass to orbit coming down to such an extent that we can really figure things out and take risks. Isaacman has previously been critical of the high costs of NASA's SLS and Orion spacecraft, advocating for a different way forward. If the launch doesn't cost half a billion dollars, we don't need to spend many, many years and lots of billions to get it right with some super exquisite asset, when you can get into a rhythm of using all these providers to get things up very quickly to see what works and what doesn't, then evolve to something else, he said. This represents a spiral development approach, which contrasts sharply with how NASA allocates much of its budget for human space missions. However, that's just one point of view. Looking at it from another angle raises a critical question. Should NASA just cancel SLS and replace it with Starship? Fundamentally, Starship could serve a dual role, acting as both the launcher to deliver astronauts to lunar orbit and as the lander to carry them to the moon. This capability would align with SpaceX's ongoing development of Starship as a fully reusable spacecraft designed for deep space missions, including the moon and Mars exploration. However, the implementation of this scenario is far from straightforward and would involve overcoming substantial technical and logistical and political challenges. Another potential alternative SpaceX Falcon Heavy has previously been considered as a candidate to launch a Orion spacecraft. However, adapting Falcon Heavy for Artemis missions would require extensive modifications to both the rocket and the procedures for mission assembly and launch. 
This would introduce significant uncertainties and likely cause further delays to an already revised Artemis timeline. The technical hurdle includes the need for advanced payload capabilities, human rating certifications, and adaptations for compatibility with the Orion spacecraft. Such changes would necessitate rigorous testing and validation, further compounding the complexity of the mission. Given those factors, there's limited time for NASA to make major adjustments to its moon program if the U.S. hopes to maintain leadership in the 21st century space race. Rocket launches designed for crewed lunar missions must meet precise requirements, including safely carrying astronauts, spacecraft, and payloads while ensuring compatibility with the mission's objectives. Artemis program aims to do more than merely return astronauts to the moon. It seeks to establish the capability of exploring diverse regions of the moon, including the relatively uncharted and resource-rich South Pole. This ambitious goal demands meticulous planning, robust technology, and scalable systems that can adapt to the unique challenges of different lunar environments. The complexity of these tasks cannot be overstated, as they involve integrating cutting-edge engineering, human safety protocols, and scientific objectives into a single, coherent mission architecture. While SpaceX has made remarkable progress in the development of Starship, the scale of responsibility that would come with replacing the SLS is unprecedented. No commercial launch company, including SpaceX, has yet demonstrated the operational readiness to take on such critical and ambitious undertakings. Transitioning Artemis to rely entirely on commercial providers like SpaceX would not only take technical and logistical adjustments, but also need a major shift in NASA's operational and strategic framework. The question remains whether SpaceX or any other private company can realistically meet the demanding requirements and timelines necessary to achieve the program's ambitious goals. And at the same time, it's understandable that the U.S., under changing administrations, will scrutinize NASA's programs and cost models. Artemis program, with its multi-billion dollar price tag, has faced criticism for its high costs and reliance on expendable technologies like the SLS. However, any decision to pivot away from SLS or significantly alter the program must carefully weigh the trade-offs. Canceling SLS and transitioning to an entirely new launch system could lead to delays, increase risks, and jeopardize the United States' competitive position in the modern space race. The ultimate decision may hinge on what the new administration prioritizes. If the primary goal is to win the new space race, both in terms of technological achievement and geopolitical influence, maintaining momentum in Artemis will be critical. On the other hand, focusing on cost reduction and efficiency might favor a transition to commercial solutions like SpaceX. Whatever the chosen path, the administration will need to justify its decisions, not just to legislators, but also to the general public, who expect both progress and accountability in the pursuit of space exploration. The stakes are high, and the path forward is fraught with challenges. Whether NASA keeps with the SLS, pivots to Starship, or adopts a hybrid approach, the decisions made in the coming years will shape the future of lunar exploration and America's role in the global space community for decades to come. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.